Coming up, the July round of Ipswich City Council committees meet Tuesday, July 21, with the ordinary meeting of council next Tuesday, July 28. In this episode, Mayor Teresa Harding joins me to talk about the proposed waste to energy plant at Swanbank, which is emerging as a major issue. I recorded this interview with the Mayor on Friday, July 17, and we also spoke about what Council can do to assist workers who will lose their jobs at Bradkin's Caravan operation. It's Monday, July 20, 2020, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to Elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. Thanks for talking with Ipswich today, Mia Harding. Thank you for the invitation, Alice. There are two major issues confronting the Ipswich community right now, the proposed waste-to-energy plant at Swanbank and the imminent loss of 180 jobs at Bradkin's Carabin site. Firstly, can you explain in simple terms what is being proposed at Swanbank and why Council can't simply knock it on the head? Uh, that's a really good question and it, it is a bit complex. So there's a company called Remondus and they'd like to do a waste to energy plant at, at, at Swanbank, which is an incinerator. Uh, so they'll take in waste and, and, and basically burn it and, and so obviously the waste is less and put that into landfill. Um, they've gone to the state government and asked it to be a coordinated project. So the, the state government will set up all the uh, terms of reference and the conditions for the environmental approvals, the community consultation and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and only when the state government has completely approved all the environmental conditions um, and, the, and that community consultation has been done properly, only then once they have approved it and ticked it off and said they want to go ahead with it, only then does it come to council, and council are only allowed to assess it against the planning scheme. You see, it's already a landfill site. Um, that's the only thing that council can do. So, you know, council can basically can't say no legally based on the um, planning scheme. Um, council can't even do community consultation on it because that was already done. So it's really important that that if, if people need to have their views uh, put forward to the state members to, to say whether they want this to happen or not. I'm seeing a fair amount of inflammatory language used saying that the project being called in by the state guarantees automatic approval. Is that true or false? Look, there are perceptions that it's a done deal by by the state government. Um, I'm being told by the state government, by the minister, that it's an independent process by the coordinator general and that they will conduct an independent process um, and will only give an approval once once it has ticked off on all the environmental conditions and has had proper community consultation. So when does council actually become involved? Um, good question. <laughs> Community consultation time. Uh, we've asked if we could be part of the uh, draft terms of reference that go out to the community. And um, we're doing things like having our Shape Your Ipswich site about this to let, just to inform people and also give the contact details of their state MP so they can contact them and let them know their views on this particular project. So it's clear it'll be a fairly lengthy pro- process if it does get approved, what would it mean for the Ipswich economy? The state government has said that um, the construction of the incinerator will, will create 200 jobs and that on an ongoing basis, once it's constructed, will be 70 jobs. I want to point out the fact that this will be, um, a, if, if it does go ahead, uh, this incinerator will be the only incinerator in, um, in Queensland. Mayor Harding, where do you personally stand on the waste to energy plant proposal without prejudicing the uh, approval process? To give my personal opinion is to prejudice the process. But I will say that this was an issue that was raised by the community during the election campaign. Um, every single mayoral candidate and every single can- council candidate was asked that. And uh, my memory is that everyone was against it. So my, my stance has not changed, Alan. Um, but I am, I now have, I'm now the mayor of, of, of council and the state government are in charge of this process. And I strongly, I strongly encourage people to ring their state members and let them know we have a state election coming up. And, and all their details and other information are on our Shape Your Rips Switch uh, website. And we'll continue to put up information as the state government gives us information. A related issue to the Swan Bank area is the odour abatement task force. Do you think it's being effective? Well, the odours are still there, Alan. So it's been running um, for, for two years now, actually. Uh, it's run by the state government, by the environmental department. Um, they've got, I think, about 10 specialist officers there. 
Uh, look, it comes at a, quite a cost. I think the state government spends about $2.5 million there um, each year on that. And so far, I think the t- fines are total around $100,000. Uh, one research company was actually fined $13,000 for failing to manage the, the foul odours from the runoff, and that's the largest fine to date. And um, from what I can gather from that task force, they've had more than 5,200 complaints um, that have been reported and investigated the last two years. The other major local issue in the past week has been the announcement by Bradkin that it will close its Caribbean site after 50 years. It's been death by a thousand cuts over many years uh, because it's been threatened with closure a number of times during downturns in the economy. Have you spoken with Bradkin management? And if you have, what did they say? Look, it's absolutely devastating. Um, it's just it's devastating that the foundry is, is closing because um, it is 180 local jobs. Um, and look, the, the business has been going in the community for about 50 years. Um, look, it is being phased, the, the job losses are being phased over 12 months. I have run there several times myself uh, at the site and no one's answered. I do have the phone number of the CEO, but I'd like to speak to uh, you know the people at site first. In the yes. meantime, are you taking any steps to help those workers who will be without a job soon? Yes, certainly our economic development team will be working with them there. The Queensland Government Department of State Development have also been in contact with Bradkin HR Resources in, in Newcastle and discussing outplacement solutions. I'm really keen to know um, kind of the, what jobs people do there. I mean, not everyone there will be um, you know, pouring metal and doing the work there. There'll be, I'm sure, forklift drivers who can work anywhere. There'll be admin people that can work anywhere. And it's really interesting people who've got technical skills, if they can reskill and do other things, can they get a job at Rheinmetall or another defence industry or you know, or work in another advanced manufacturing area? I mean, I think it's really important to get down to the, the nuts and bolts on, on each individual person and, and what we can do to help them um, find another, another job. I know the announcement is fresh, but is there any possibility the Carabin site could be repurposed? Well, I have had that, that discussion with uh, Councillor Kate Kongler and Councillor Russell Mimigan. Um, we have to see what the site is, and that's up to um, Bradkin on what they want to do with it as well. But I, I, that would be something that would be a discussion, I think, a bit later on. And as we're close to the next round of committees, what's the most important item on the agenda, in your opinion? Well, I'm very excited about the Ipswich Central to Springfield Central um, Public Transport Corridor um, business case. Um, Council um, commissioned this commissioned this when Greg Chimello was the interim administrator and it's the first of the three business cases we need to get that train line built. It really should be paid for by the state government. Um, the councils have uh, paid for that and taken that on, on, on their own shoulders. The rate pays which have paid for that. But it shows quite clearly the strong business case and the economic need and as well as the social need for us to have that. 70% of the growth that's happening um, in Ipswich, will be actually along that train line. We desperately need that train line to connect our city and just to boost the economy as well as you know, just to improve our quality of life to, to move around and get to work and go to sport and go to school and all those things. Is Ipswich City Council considering making a cash contribution in much the same way as Moreton Bay Regional Council did for the Kipper Ring line? Yeah, look, I, that particular one was a breakdown of the federal government paid 50%, I think, and the state government paid 40 and the council paid 10%. Um, look, I think we're open to all options. It is a state government responsibility, the, the train line, as well as public transport. So, look, we'll be working with the state and federal governments on this. And finally, Mayor Harding, the other item on the agenda that uh, will create a lot of community uh, discussion and feedback is the future of Swifts in Cameron Park at Bouval. What are the options being presented this week? Well, first is a club near and dear to my heart. I, I live and race you and it's in Bouval, so I, I, I go there often and really lovely people and lovely members. Um, at the moment, it's a council-owned um, property uh, and on council-owned land and there's and Swift have been there for 20 years now and they've got a lease for another 20 years. Uh, they'd like to, to buy it and they want to extend the land and take in some of the green space and and build it and, and I think add 180 poke machines. So, look, we need to go through a, a really open and transparent process. When it came to council last year, back in June, uh, Swiss were asked to do a, a master plan and to do appropriate community consultation. Um, to date, they actually haven't done a master plan and they, they did a little bit of community consultation, but there wasn't a master plan to look at. So, I think they might be a bit contentious because it's quite emotional. People are very um, passionate about whether... Um, Council should proceed with a sale, or whether mm. it sh- or whether it shouldn't. Um, yeah, so look, I think the main thing is that um, I'm not swayed either way. To be perfectly like my personal opinion, um, I just want to make sure that the community are heard, um, and and we, we do what the community wants. 
Mayor Harding, thanks again for talking to Ipswich today. Thank you very much, Alan. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. You can subscribe for free and share this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today from your smart speaker. Suggestions are welcome for future interviews and topics. Just go to the Ipswich Today website or Facebook page and leave a message. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thanks for listening.